What you are about to hear is a true account of an American, a Californian, who was engaged in the distribution of raw milk, a wholesome, natural food upon which our country, our nation was founded. But he has been subjected to torture. He was nearly killed. He survived eight days of torture in the L.A. County jail system and lived to tell about it. In his own words, you will now hear him talk about what happened to him in the L.A. County jail and how he has been targeted and punished for being the milkman. These are the words of James Stewart of Rawsome Foods, recorded the morning of March 10th, 2012. I'm Mike Adams, the health ranger, asking the questions, and the other voice you will hear is James Stewart. Can you go through how you were treated, the, the hypothermia, the raw sewage, the, the being shackled, all of it, the interrogation? Sure. You know, when I, when I as I said to you before, when I was um, handcuffed uh, in this sort of grandstanding event that happened uh, in the courtroom, which was completely unnecessary, um, I was taken down um, and uh, put into a holding cell underneath the jail for, um, I'm, I'm guessing, it was 11 o'clock, and they handcuffed me till about 5 in the afternoon. And that's, that was a holding cell with a minimum 20 or 30 guys in there. Yes, there was a phone. Yes, there was a sink toilet. But we were fed no food. I was given no food the entire time I was there, underneath there. And by the way, when I woke up that morning um, thinking it was just going to be a simple court appearance to make another appearance, um, I had eaten nothing nor had drinking anything. So uh, by 5 o'clock in the afternoon, um, I had drunk nothing except tap water out of this little sink and had eaten no food whatsoever and given no food whatsoever. So this is, just to get the date right, this is uh, March... Uh, that, or, that's March 2nd. That was the Friday that uh, we were in court and arrested. So, so you were, I'm, just to be clear, you were, you were in court to appear at a preliminary hear, hearing for L.A. County and then Ventura County deputies leaped over the bar and did an ambush arrest there in the court. Well, I don't think it was Ventura deputies. I think it was just more sheriffs that uh, had that they, they said they had a warrant out for me in Ventura, so they arrested me because, you know, uh, that, that their job is to arrest people when there's warrants out there. So, and, why, how come they didn't take you to Ventura immediately? Why did they take you to L L A jail? It's a good question. Why didn't they take me to? I don't know. I mean, I, I was assuming. Uh, I actually said that when I was in the holding cell. Why am I not going to Ventura? Why am I being held in L.A. If I have a, well, it's too late, and uh, they're probably not going to come and get you until uh, Monday or something. And I mean, and by the way, I only got that answer once. Many times between the time where I was arrested and the time where I was in that holding cell, um, I asked sheriffs uh, or the whatever you call them, the the. Uh, law enforcement officials there uh, that were uh, booking me or whatever they were doing, um, where, what are the charges? I never got to see any charges. I kept on saying, you, how can you arrest somebody without knowing what the charges are? This is not legal to do that. So they never showed me the charges. I never was told what the bail amount was. I never was told anything about it whatsoever. They just, they just be silent, and they, when you ask them questions, they, they actually get belligerent with you when you ask them questions. Are you trying wow. to make trouble? Are you trying to make trouble? You know, it's like, you know, that's, the, that's what you get back from them when you're trying to be civil and ask them questions, okay? Wow. So then I'm, I'm, I'm handcuffed, taken out of this uh, holding cell around 5, and, uh, and transported uh, in handcuffs on a bus over to uh, the Los Angeles downtown jail, which is, by the way, considered the worst in the country. It's called Twin Towers. And uh, they first put you into a room, then they come in unhandcuff you. They always make you look at the floor. They, always, they, they make you comply. They're, they're very stern and rough and even aggressive, but not physically aggressive, verbally aggressive, okay? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I was there last year, so I thought I'll, I'll just go through the same, you know, booking and procedure or whatnot. No, I'm taken out of line, which I think is very strange, and I'm taken to an office. And in the office are two uh, um, uh, deputy sheriffs, uh, fairly young guys. I might say probably in their mid-30s or whatnot. One's na I, mean, I know the one's man <clears throat> name who, who then started to uh, interrogate me and, and accuse me of stuff. His name was Sexton, S-E-X-T-O-N. Mm -hmm. don't, don't know his first name, but um, he, uh, he said, are you a sovereign? 
And I said, what's that? He said, no, you know what that is. You're a sovereign. You know, and I, and I kept on saying, sir, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, you know, and so this went on for about, I'd say, five or ten minutes. And uh, he finally said, well, you're going to be a danger to the population. I, I didn't admit to anything in there, okay? Mm-hmm. I, finally just, I, I finally just said to him, I, I, I really don't think I should be saying any more in here. Um, and so they take me out, put me into jail garb, and then they, they put a red band on me, which is now supposedly uh, a danger to the general population of, of the jail itself. Um, so they're accusing me, I guess, because of the, uh, the uh, accusation of being a terrorist, uh, i.e. a sovereign, which I never used the word ever. They're the only ones that ever used that word. Um, they put a red band on <clears throat> which I didn't know at that moment what that meant. Okay, I, so I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but this, this reminds me, the FBI put out alerts a few weeks back saying that so-called sovereign citizens or sovereign individuals are... A, a threat to law enforcement and might just shoot people at any time. So, so it sounds like they were using that, you know, fear mongering by the FBI, and then just basically uh, declaring you to be guilty of being a sovereign, which is no crime anyway. I mean, we are all of us are sovereign citizens. The people run the country, really. You know, read the Constitution. But it sounds like they're using that to then convict you of being a sovereign and then give you and this you- treatment. Well, using that to now completely uh, uh, torture and abuse me, which is now what we're about to talk about, because then they took this long chain about, I guess, probably 15 feet long and wrapped it around my waist about two, three times and then put my hands behind me and then uh, put the handcuffs on attached to these long chains around my waist. Uh, The red band was put on my arm, which I didn't know what it meant at that point, and put into an area... Uh, where I was supposed to go get medical tests, and now, now it's my guess is about probably 6, 6.15, 6.30 maybe. And uh, instead of just being in there with already handcuffed behind me, and the handcuffs were so tight, I, I thought my wrists were going to break off. Trust me, I'm, I have very wide wrists. And so I'm, he then takes me over to a bench in this area, and beside being handcuffed and shackled, I'm now handcuffed to the bench as well. So now I can't move more than six inches either way. I don't have a great back. I, I'm 65 years old, okay? This is not some young guy who can handle this kind of abuse, okay? Mm-hmm. So I'm sitting there on this bench for hours. I'm guessing four or five hours. And they eventually, one guy uh, from the medical pod, uh, whatever you call that, he, Richard, his name was Richard. He was the only nice guy there. He came over and moved my hand my hand from behind me to along my side, but never removed the chain, and eventually uh, un- unhandcuffed me from the bench, but that was hours later. Then they forced me to take chest x-rays, and they forced me to go through medical tests while still handcuffed, okay? Even while I was taking an EKG test, I'm lying on the table handcuffed. So I thought, okay, I've had it already, and like, I'm dying here. This is this is completely just incredible abuse. But isn't isn't that would you consider that torture? What they did? I, that's what I I already wrote that down. It, I would consider it worse than torture because not only are you being you know they're not kicking your ribs in, but they're actually torturing you mentally and physically. Okay, this is a combination of mental and physical torture to break you down, probably to make you into a a sovereign or a violent criminal or whatnot, because now you're so angry about what they're doing to you that you come unglued. And I just kept my composure, and then eventually at midnight after finishing all the medical tests, I think I'm being taken to a jail cell where I can finally lie down on a bed. And no, they take me to an area of the jail where there's nobody there, and there's a bunch of, uh, again, um, detention cells and whatnot. Take the handcuffs off put me into the cell with more, nothing more than a T-shirt and a pair of pants, which probably, temperature-wise, is probably in the mid-50s in there, and leave me there for three hours, freezing to death, okay? And I was shaking. I was in hypothermia at that point. They finally got me, I'm guessing, around 3 o'clock in the morning and finally took me to a cell. Well, this cell was in a part of the, of the jail that uh, it's called, the, the cell I was in was Denver 22, and it was two tiers, but the bottom tier was the cage, but open to the top tier. 
So you had you heard a total of 52 cells because there was either 26 or 27. No lights, um, pretty much no comfort, uh, a, a, a one-inch foam pad that didn't even support your weight, and so your hips were ground into the metal of the, of the bed. Mm-hmm. Um, and and left with a, a, a threw, threw in the door a baggie with two pieces of bread, two cookies, and a ba- little tiny bag of of, um, of peeled carrots. And that's all. That is all I've had now since Thursday night. And I kept on saying, "I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. Drink the tap water. That's all you're going to get." Okay. They never gave me any food until three o'clock in the morning, and threw a baggie of it on the floor in there. So I'm thinking, oh, my God, I'm, I'm going to die in here. So um, I try to get some sleep, but because of, the, of this particular part of the jail, people are yelling and screaming all night. They're banging on the walls. They're singing. They're all tattooed, you know, uh, gang members and whatnot. And this, is where, and this is where I'm supposed to get some peace and quiet, okay? I never slept that night. Now I'm in sleep deprivation. If you don't think that's torture, try it yourself after sure, about right. two days, okay? And so... The next morning when some of them were taken away to go to, I guess, court or wherever else they were going, I tried to get some sleep between, I'm guessing, 8 and 11 or 12. And the next thing I know is the guy, below, he's below me, because, but he's in the cell next door because the way the cells are configured, one cell has the bunk above and the other cell has the bunk below, but they're actually right above each other. So he starts banging on the cell, hey, dude, dude, and he's like, you know, he's screaming at me, and I'm like, I, I don't know if the guy's trying to mess with me or what he's trying to do, I don't know. And he finally says, hey, dude, man, you got to you, look in your cell. You know, and I, and I start, I smelled it, I'm like, it smells like the toilet's overflowed, and I look over, my toilet hasn't overflowed, but there's nothing, there's shit floating in the floor, there's sewage coming down the hallway, I look out the jail from sitting up on the bed, Somebody has flooded the whole tier with toilet water, which is now running into everybody's cells. And they, because they were awake, they took towels and whatnot to divert it away from their own cells. So now it's all in mine. The cell is about two inches, three inches deep with all of this sewage water floating. Oh, raw sewage. Raw sewage ro- floating around in my cell. Now I can't, it, my shirt was on the floor, my shoes were on the floor, so they're all, uh, you know, uh, wet with all this stuff, so I don't try you, to get them. Well, well, just to interrupt, but how absurd is it that the, this whole thing started because they say you sold raw milk containing live bacteria, and then to incarcerate you, they throw you in a cell with shit flowing through it that is obviously loaded with live bacteria. I mean, if 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 the state is supposed to be about sanitation, how can they punish you? By throwing you in a cell with raw sewage. Well, it, it was my point as well, Mike, because, you know, even the guy below me, I said, well, they'll come and clean it up, won't they? You know, I was like, I was, in, I was hyperventilating because the smell was intense. And he said, hey, dude, man, they're not going to come for, for hours. And I said, oh, come on. And he said, no, I'm serious. And so he was right, uh, maybe three hours, maybe even three or four hours later, finally a crew of inmates who they call trustees came in to try to clean it all up. Do they come actually into your cell to clean your cell? No, they don't. They hand you the uh, the squeegee to try to squeegee it out yourself while you're you're oh you're on, kidding me while you're up on your bunk and now the squeegee has splashed all over the bottom of the desk and all over the bottom of the walls and then they hand you the very mop that they've been using to clean up the shit and they say well just clean out the rest of your cell with this mop the mop that already is just contaminated with all this bacteria. They never came into the cell. They never cleaned anything up. They 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 tried to make me do it. And of course, I was like. So they 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 expose you to. I mean, you could be exposed to cholera. You could be exposed to deadly pathogens, uh, just being in the cell. And then they made you clean it up with a little handheld squeegee. So well, here's what I'm saying. The guy even below me said that that, that there was. Uh, uh, he was using those words. He was saying, "Don't touch the water, dude. It, you, it'll make you. You'll end up with, uh, you know, some bad, bad stuff. You know." So he was trying to be nice to me because I said, "Has this happened to you before?" He goes, "Oh yeah, about two, three weeks ago, a month ago, they did the same thing." You know, I mean, this is how these people are treated in there. It's like I was like, "Are you out of? You're kidding me?" So you know, they, he was talking, "Don't touch the water. You know, you can get all kinds of diseases from the water and whatnot. So, you know, just try to do the best you can." And so for the next, that was on Saturday. 
So obviously they didn't do a very good job cleaning it up. Uh, in fact, you know, it was just the opposite. So I, I listened. Well, it, it, can you describe the smell? The, what was the smell like? I mean, it, it, to me, it was like um, it was like it was like it's like opening a sewer, uh, uh, you know, hatch cover in the street and smelling what it like it smells in there. It was it was. I had a towel over my head. I was trying to somehow hold one nostril. You know, so I wouldn't actually smell it. You know, I mean, it was just, it was awful, man. I, I just, I, I just was in shock that they would leave people in here. You know, where's the, where's the hygiene? Do they actually want to force people to end up with some sort of disease because they're in there? Are you, my, every thought went through my head. I was thinking, I, I just can't believe they're doing this. I mean, and they're, they're claiming that I, I never thought that until you just said that, that I was the one that is in some way harming other people. I mean, this is what they, they purposely do to you. So well, yeah, you, you sold milk, so they, they release raw shit uh, across your bunk. I mean, they could have done this on purpose. I mean, did, did you ever think that they did this on purpose as another way to punish you? Yes, I, I, of course I did. I thought maybe they went into an empty cell that was four or five cells down and, and turned on the toilet and did that on purpose. I, you'll never know. Of course, I thought, what do you think? Because the, the, that thought was through my mind many times. And so I, I, I just thought maybe they're just after me personally. I didn't know. But, you know, meanwhile, that's Saturday, right? Well, when do you, how long do you think I had to remain in that cell? I had to remain in the cell until 11.45 p.m. Sunday night. Wow. So for another day and a half, I'm required to stay in this this disgusting, dangerous environment of bacteria that's probably crawling all over the walls in there. This is what they made me stay in for the next day and a half. Okay. Oh along with along with some other people, but many yeah. other uh, other the inmates that were in there had put anything they could, towels and whatnot, in the way of their doorway to divert it elsewhere. I was not awake, so I was unable to have that because you had been, you had been so, sleep deprived before and subjected to hypothermia before and all these other things. You know, uh, I finally, you know, Sunday evening, I thought I'd be being transferred because now it would be Monday and I'd be transferred to Ventura. So they, I was thinking they'd wake me up at around 4.30 or 5 in the morning to be put on a bus to Ventura. No, they wake me up at 11.45 at night and throw me back into the same holding cell uh, pretty much that I had been for that previous three hours before I was booked into that cell. Now I'm in that cell for six hours with no heat and nothing but that little sink toilet in there and no thermals at all, all at all. And uh, for six hours I had to stay awake and, and uh, try to keep warm until they came and got me and put me on a bus. I, I thought I was going mean, to die. And if you, if you had died, they would just rig up a rope or something and say you committed suicide. Um, you know, all those thoughts crossed my mind, buddy. I, that's why I was being, I, I, I put my hands inside me. You know how you can do that? You can pull your arms in through your shirt sleeves and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. That's, what I, that's what I did to try to keep myself warm. Um, but I just basically was sitting and rocking on a bench for six hours or standing up and trying to walk around and trying to stay warm in there because nobody came, by the way. Nobody came. Nobody came. Nobody came to see me. Well, Nobody came to talk to me. No, there was no phone in there. I couldn't use anything. During this time, by the way, one of your attorneys was desperately trying to locate you, and you were, quote, lost in the system. No one could find you. They, they had hidden you away. I mean, even law enforcement officials could not find you. That It was on purpose that, that you were lost. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's... See, while you were in the cell, so much was happening outside of, of things going on and people trying to locate you, and uh, they they lost you on purpose. Wow. Uh, you know, I, I asked, by the way, I, multiple times, I said, I need to use a phone to call an attorney. And they would, you know, when a, when a sheriff would go by that cell, uh, I'd say once every three hours or four hours, I would try to get the guy's attention. The man wouldn't even turn his head he wouldn't even acknowledge that I was even there. Wow. Period. Yeah, a total dehumanization. To, to, to them, I guess you're just an animal because you're, you're a food, you're a raw milk farmer. I mean... Uh, Mike, the, Mike the, th the thing is, I've always been here to help and assist other people and, you know, and to doing the best I can to attain the highest quality food. And I, I thought, this is, this, is, this is my reward for 
for all the years I've been trying to do this is to be put into this uh, this it's worse than danger uh, environment. It's it's it is torture. I I used the word. I actually wrote uh, when I got to Ventura. My my thoughts down there. They were there on a piece of paper. I wrote actually toilet paper. I wrote on um, to try to tell everybody what I'd gone through before I would forget half the stuff because I was actually where they were actually mentally going to break me and I was going to break down and they were going to put me into a psych ward or something because. I was at times I was close to m- mentally breaking down. Um, I'm sure that's part of the strategy. Uh, I mean, they 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 want to do anything to victimize you. Now, as, as we talk right now, which is on uh, Saturday morning, Sharon Palmer is still there. She's still being held. Correct. She's at a, she's at a place now. So they've moved her from uh, which Victoria told me from uh, the Ventura jail system to over something in Santa Paula called Pod Road. So I know that she's over there, and that's why we're going to visit her, because I, I want to give some support to Sharon, who is a lovely human being, who is a great mother, who is a great farmer, who is a, a, a very honest person, uh, who's had a, a really tough past uh, with ex-husbands who have screwed with people and whatnot. I mean, this woman doesn't deserve anything. Uh, she's never uh, shown me any evidence ever of being a bad person ever. In fact, I, I, if anybody, I would say that of the five people I trust most in my life, she'd be on that first hand. I trust Sharon, and I always have. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Well, you don't, you don't have to respond to this, but I'm just going to say on the record, I, I think you have a case to sue L.A. County to, uh, for violating your civil rights, for subjecting you to torture, for exposing you to potentially deadly pathogens, for yeah, but, almost but, but, killing you. But, I mean... I know, but my thought is, they're going to say, oh, it's just a bunch of hooey and, and whatnot. And I have no evidence. I thought about that when I was in there. See, they, it's their environment, and so they win all the time when you're in there. You can claim it, but how can you prove it? You can't prove anything. They're going to say, oh, he's just lying. He's just you know, trying to tr- make things look worse than they were and whatnot. And I'm, I'm not joking. Everything I just told you is actually perfectly... You know, it has, there's no exaggeration in it. This is exactly what happened the whole time I was there. So, as I said, when I got to Ventura, things were a lot better. And by the way, the bus ride up to Ventura, it was the first time I've ever been on a, on a sheriff's bus that actually had padding on the seat. I was like, I was in heaven, and you could see out the windows. To me, it was like, oh, my God, it's heaven. <laughs> wow. What, what are your thoughts? You know, they slapped you with a million dollars bail. Now, here we are in a, in a time when... Uh, people like Jerry Sandusky, you know, accused of uh, raping young young boys, uh, Penn State. John Corzine, yeah, never arrested after stealing billions of dollars from investors, not even arrested. Uh, these murderers and these rapists and these, these thieves, they get no bail. And you were slapped with a million dollars over selling milk. It's, I, I, I'm, I'm speechless with trying to come up with uh, adjectives to describe the Hold on, somebody's knocking at my door. People are bringing me food because they know I've been like <laughs> I've been foodless for days. But no, the 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 there are so many words and adjectives, Mike, you could use that would describe uh, the brutality, the insanity, the 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 bail uh, conditions, and everything else, which are they're they're beyond even belief. Okay, they obviously, in my view, they're actually exposing themselves for the real sinister characters they are by actually doing those things because you and I and other people can compare what these other way more sinister individuals have done to compare to what I, by the way, I'm not even in, involved in this whole thing, but that will come out. Um, the, that's what you're, talk, go ahead. you're talking about the, 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 the financial charges that were leveled against you Correct. Uh, stemming from a 2008 investigation. Yeah, you're, you're, you don't even own the farm. Your name's not on the paper. You never uh, signed up investors. You, you, literally, you do not have any part in that. That's all correct. It's just, so you were arrested and thrown in prison for, I, I guess, knowing Sharon Palmer. I guess so. <laughs> for, for being her friend. I mean, yeah. so, I mean, think about it. They tortured you and almost killed you for, for knowing someone. I am so sorry of what you have been through. I mean, you can't, my, my heart pours out to you. I, so many times I wish I could just go out there and spring you from, from jail. But of course, they would have you know, arrested or shot me. Um, 
this this injustice just cannot stand. This is this is worse than North Korea what they did to you, or at least it's comparable to it. I mean, we're talking about you know Russian gulags. We're we're talking about uh, torture in secret prisons where you were lost in the system, couldn't be located, nearly killing you. I know. It's uh, when people hear this, they they will be rightfully outraged. And they should be, buddy, because, you know, if, if they can do this to a person who's never harmed a flea in his life, in his life, I've never even been in a fight, Mike, okay? I don't fight with people. I've never been in a fist fight. I, I, I'm not an, an, an angry person at all. Um, you know, I try to, de- to deal with stuff in the, in the best way I can that, that satisfies both sides of the, of the issue and whatnot. I'm always trying to be the, uh, the mediator to things and whatnot. Um, I've never been convicted of anything in my life, ever, and not never. I have no, I have no record at all, period. Now, what they're trying to do is, is obviously convict me here on both of these things so I actually have a record. Yeah. So that's why I find that in, in, incredible as well because I'm 65 years old and I've never, I've never been convicted of anything, period. What is your view on, you mentioned the sheriffs, the deputies, the workers in the prison system. It's like... They treated you worse than an animal. It, it's like they were they have been completely dissociated from all human properties, human contact. I mean, it's like they're they're cogs in a machine that just destroys people. did you Did you see any glimmer of humanity in those workers? As I told you, the only guy that I saw a glimmer of humanity from was that guy Richardson and took the handcuffs from behind my back and put them on my sides in the medical pod. He had some heart. That's the word I've used a lot. I saw no heart in there other than him. In fact, I, I feel an energy in there of, of uh, gloatingness where they can gloat over the fact that they can be mean and nasty to people and, and disrespectful to people. And they are. They're disrespectful to you. Once you're in their, in their, in their, play, in their playing field, uh, they, they, they actually, it feels like they enjoy what they're doing. I see oh, yeah. them laugh. I've seen them laugh. I've seen them make jokes about uh, what people are going through and whatnot. I witnessed that as well. So you know, they're they're heartless. They're they're really heartless in there. They're mean in a very interesting way. They're mean because they ignore you. They're mean because they they make it, they make you feel like you are completely a, just a piece of shit in there. And uh, to me, that's you know, it, w- listen. You and I have all watched all these movies, you know, and you go, well, what are the, what's the, uh, the terminology when you're at war and then you're, you're captured and whatnot? There's the Geneva Convention rules yeah. of how, uh, how you humanely treat people. This is, this is not there. They, they, this is torture, buddy. This is, there is no, in what I experienced now, Ventura was different. I granted it took way long to book me in 12 hours. I don't understand why the process takes so long. But you're dealt with in a much more you know, uh, e- not easy fashion, but uh, much more, it, it's not so, br- it's not, it's not brutal, okay? It's not brutality. What I experienced in downtown LA was brutality, period. Well, we, we know that the recruiting for these, uh, I don't know, pr- prison guards, jail guards, the, these law enforcement people, the recruiting specifically looks for people who are psychologically imbalanced, who, the kind of people who would burn small cats and dogs alive when they were kids because they thought it was just fun to kill small animals. Those are the kinds of people who are guarding prisoners. I mean, they, the, the recruiting looks for those people. And they're, they, they often choose to make them low IQ people. You know, if, if you score too high on the IQ test, they reject you because they don't want people to think for themselves. They want cruel people who will torture, who will follow orders, and who will not figure out the bigger picture. I mean, that's just what I've learned. Yeah, well, I got to witness it, and I think that there's a lot of truth in that because, you know, up until, up until this last week, I had no real, you know, experience with uh, what the truth really is. But now I have the experience, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm shocked that this is the United States, or I'm shocked that this is America, whatever you want to call it, because it, it doesn't seem even like that's true. It seems like you're in some third-world country in, in a gulag like uh, Midnight Express, yeah. you know, where you're just absolutely just tortured. And, and, and that was the experience I had. So, you know, it, 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 your mind goes, how can this be? This is, this is America. 
Yeah, right, right. Where you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, well, if I was supposed to be innocent, or I am innocent for sure, until proven guilty, why are you treated as guilty until you have to try to prove yourself innocent? Yes. Well, I mean, why why would they torture me the way I just described? If they haven't, they, they're basically saying you're guilty, and now you're going to have to prove to us you're not, and you're not a, a terrorist and a sovereign and all this other stuff. You know, it's like, you know, they they really have a their attitude is just. I mean, you're right. They have to hire these people and find these people to uh, to continue that whole, you know. Uh, uh, effort and on their part to to make everybody uh, my, mike they i think half the people in there who i talk to are not bad bad people at all many of the people are just they've done recreational drugs or they've done other things and i've heard people that say they were in there for domestic violence where there was no they never even touched the other person you know it was just a yelling and screaming match and whatnot yeah they're in, they're incarcerating thousands and tens of thousands of people who don't even deserve to be in well, there a, let alone it's a prison society alone, Right, who let alone me, who absolutely doesn't deserve to be in there. Trust of course. me. Well, even the judge, I heard, when, when the judge reduced your bail from $1 million to $100,000, didn't he say that uh, this James just sounds like the milkman to me? Something like that? That's his, his, you got the exact words. So, That's exactly what he said. So the judge saw some, some glimmer of truth in all of this. That's that's encouraging. Um, there there are still good people left in law enforcement. There are still good people in the judicial system. It's just that it seems like the bullies and the tyrants have all the power and have, you know, their numbers seem to be growing. It's it's very scary. I mean, even at this point, James, couldn't they march into your apartment or wherever you are right now? They could arrest you right now for no reason and do it all over again. Yes, they could. And trust me, I didn't sleep well last night because I don't even. Uh, it, 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 they trauma. It's trauma. It's drama and trauma, and together, they create this where now you're not even sure what what you know what's coming next in the next moment. I mean, you're. Uh, I, am I nervous a lot? Uh, a hell of a lot more than I used to be in the past. Absolutely. You know, a good guy now has to be concerned about being reincarcerated for God knows even know what, I mean, I mean, if it's a million dollars on something that I'm not even part of, what's next? I mean, where does this country come to? I, mean, I agree with you. Yes. I, I don't sleep well at night right now. And, uh, I, mean, I don't think anybody would if they'd been through what I just was through. Well, and the truth is this whole arrest was, was just a uh, public theater. They could have just issued a summons to appear a letter that just says appear at this date. And, I mean, you've appeared. Sharon has appeared at every date, every meeting. N- neither one of you has fled anything. You've always Absolutely. shown up. Five times. You- so I don't get why didn't they just issue a summons to appear? I mean, yeah, I, you know, uh, they said in court. I uh, don't know if you heard this, but they said in court that they had tried to contact me. I never received a phone call from them, not that I know of. And the only phone call I ever got from Ventura. Uh, I told Sharon about, which was, uh, I'm guessing, four or five months ago, and I said I got a phone call from the uh, Ventura DA's office, and I called them back, and I said, uh, this is James Stewart, uh, you're, somebody from your office called me, and they said, uh, well, we don't, we don't know who that would have been, and I said, well, I'm just contacting you back, well, what was the person's name? I said, I couldn't, I couldn't understand what their name was, but that's why I'm calling you back. I don't know. I'm giving you my name. Wouldn't that be enough for you to find out who would be wanting to speak with me? Uh-huh. And they said, and said no. And that's the last time. When they said in court yesterday that they had tried to contact me, that is a lie. I, unless that, that was that, that phone call five months ago. But this warrant was only issued four days ago. Well, but we, we've seen they lie. They lie about everything. I don't want to get into the facts of the case because I know this is all still pending for you. But I, on the record, I, I've, I've seen multiple case, uh, uh, examples of uh, Ventura County just flat out lying, just inventing fictitious accusations, fictitious evidence, moving evidence around. Um, even, even the original warrant to raid Rossum, signed by Michelle Le Cavalier, that, that was based entirely on fabricated uh, evidence. I mean, it's, it's, it's been, for the record, I mean, this has been a, 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 a scam of, of vengeance, of, of revenge against you and Sharon from the very beginning. It's clear. Yeah. Yes. It, it has, uh, uh, Mike, and I, I, I know it, and I'm, I'm, I'm in it, and I will continue to do everything I can to bring true justice 
to what needs to be brought to, to do whatever they're going to do. That goes as far as the bureaucracy, the government, the individuals involved that are the members of the public or whatnot. There's a lot of things going on. You know, I've always been an honest guy, Mike. I always tell people the truth. I mean, if the truth sets you free. And I'm not using that, you know, to, out of the Bible, although I'm sure it's true as well. But, you know, for me, the truth is the easiest thing to, to share with people because you don't have to remember what you said. The right. truth is the truth. Well, I, I know I know you got to go. You get, you've got lots to do today, but I just want to I want to mention to you something that uh, that was said behind the scenes when while you were in jail, and that is, you know, among among the um, the defense attorneys involved in this case, uh, there was a discussion. Uh, one of the defense attorneys was a former prosecutor, and uh, he he said he said, you know, when we were prosecutors, we were we were told that as prosecutors or DAs, we have the power to destroy people's lives, and that we have to be very cautious about how we wield that power. We have to wield that power in the interest of the people, never for personal revenge, never to just win. It's not about winning. It has to be about honoring the will of the people. And that motto, that philosophy, has been completely abandoned by the DAs today in L.A. County and Ventura County. They that is correct. By the way, when I went to the Constitutional Sheriff's Convention at the end of January, first day of February, I spoke to a minimum 40 head sheriffs, and we're not talking about deputy sheriffs, we're talking the head sheriffs of their counties in their states around the country, uh, and they basically said to me that they understood that something very sinister and bad was going on out there in government and law enforcement, and that was coming from them. So what you're saying to me right now is being corroborated and agreed to by the actual sheriffs of many of these counties around the country. So, you know, the law that all of a sudden the, all the rules that used to be, you know, justice and whatnot have no longer apply. Well, the sheriffs may be the only force that actually saves us from tyranny. And I know the L.A. County sheriffs, they, they've been infiltrated by some very bad people. But across the country, the sheriffs typically are the good guys, the last good guys. Yeah, and Sheriff Mack, who whose conference you referred to, is is a hero for liberty and justice. And if if he, you know, he's running for Congress, and if if his message can continue to spread among sheriffs, we may yet have a chance to defeat tyranny and make sure that the way you were treated never happens to other innocent Americans again. But uh, this this story is not over, I know, and I I pray for you, James, and I hope that you will continue to exercise your voice and share with us this information that the public needs to know. All right, Mike. Thank you. The phone is ringing, so I'll go. Okay. But I, I appreciate you a lot, man. You too, James. Take care. It is difficult to underscore the magnitude of what we just heard. We just heard the testimony of a man, a farmer, a, a milkman. Uh, committed no, no crime other than selling, not even selling, just distributing raw milk that other people already owned. And uh, being subjected to what amounts to torture, food deprivation, sleep deprivation, hypothermia, required to stay in a cell with raw sewage floating across the floor for 36 hours, chained and shackled to a bench with restricted movement, uh, practically killed, practically driven to the edge of sanity. This is what the state now does to farmers in America, if you can believe that. Look, people, share this information. I'm releasing this interview into the public domain so that you may copy it, you may download it, you may email it, you may post it. And I, in fact, I, I beg you, post it uh, on, onto YouTube. YouTube will try to censor it because they now censor everything that is critical of government. But, and they will try to censor this video, even though it's just telling the truth, a whistleblower incarcerated by the system, victimized by LA County YouTube will censor it so you need to post it under different names different titles different accounts everywhere to get this out go to if you want to download the source file for this the source mp3 and the source video file go to naturalnews.com that's the website where I'm the editor and we'll have download links for you there so you can keep downloading this spread the word everywhere I'll, ha I'll have a lo-fi version and a hi-fi version of, of the audio as well as a movie file. We've got to get the word out, folks. I mean, do, do you realize what's happening here? Do you realize? I mean, th th this is like North Korea. It's, 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 
when they come after the farmers, okay, what is the limit? If they can, if they can incarcerate and torture a farmer, a milkman, what can't they do? California has been infiltrated by rogue agents, outright criminals. They work in the DA's office in LA County and in Ventura County. In fact, I, I gotta say, the, the, the DA's offices of both of those counties are run by criminals. And I'm saying that on the record. They are run by criminals, unindicted criminals. And this has gotten to the point, folks, where we need to start calling for a mass citizen's arrest of the DA's of these two counties. We need to start calling for a mass citizen's arrest of the sheriff's deputies who took part in this Ill illegitimate, illegal kidnapping slash arrest of James Stewart. I've got the names of those deputies. I'm going to post them along with other documentation about them. They, they are unindicted criminals. All right. It's time that we, the people stood up for our rights, stood up for law. And you know what? The state is subject to the people. In, in the power structure of America, the people are at the very top. The people grant, they delegate power to the state. They delegate power to the government to act on their behalf in the interest of the people. And when that government fails to act on, in the interest of the people, or when the, when the government betrays the people, it is not just the right, but the active duty of the people to remove those criminals first by voting them out but secondly as a last resort by force if necessary in order to restore law and justice to restore the republic this is written in the constitution and in the bill of rights and even in state constitutions and in texas for example where i'm located it is written into the state law that a citizen witnessing a felony crime may use a firearm to stop that crime from happening. Now, I'm not calling for violence. It, it should only be a last resort. And fortunately, most of the sheriffs and deputies in Texas are actually good people. In fact, it's the sheriffs nationwide who are the good people. But when, when deputies or when local police become criminals, it is the duty of the people to stand up to them, to arrest them by force if necessary to stop them from committing their crimes against the people and if you don't get that then you don't understand liberty then you don't understand freedom you don't understand power people in california today have allowed their government to rule over them like tyrants they have failed to exercise their duty as free people to recall those tyrants to even arrest those tyrants to to call for them to be fired from their offices. And think about it. If, if the, the DA in LA County can get away with this, what else could they do? They could arrest you for growing tomatoes in your front yard. They could arrest you for bottling water and sending bottled water to school with your child. They could claim on, only city water is approved. I mean, they, they, they could arrest you for having silver coins in your house. They could arrest you for buying vitamins and having basic nutrition. They could say, that's not approved by the county. They could arrest you for anything. And then they could torture you, they could kill you in prison and just say you committed suicide. They could do that right now. And, and probably they are doing that. We just don't know the details of it. I mean, I mean, think about it. Think about all the people who are rotting in the prisons because they smoked a joint. You know, it's legal to grow hemp in Canada and China and South America. Why isn't it legal to grow hemp in California? Because the system is run by tyrants and criminals. They, they smuggle the drugs in to America. You think, you think those LAPD aren't on the take in the drug trade? Come on, of course they are. You think Miami cops aren't totally corrupted by drug money? Of course they are. It's the police who run the drugs. And that's why they want to keep it illegal, because by keeping it illegal, they keep their profits rolling. And when the police become the criminal element, then it's up to the people to recall those police or, or have them arrested or forcibly arrest them. And what else, what else can you ask for in a, a legal law-abiding society? If we operate under the rule of law, those laws must apply 
to everyone equally, you, me, the sheriff, the deputy, the LAPD, the cop, the, the, the district attorney, the president, those laws must apply equally. And when, when that fails to happen, then you have corruption and you have tyranny and you have oppression that gets out of control. Restoring the rule of law requires citizen action. And that is what I'm encouraging you to all strongly consider today. Citizen action against uh, illegal arrest of private citizens, against the illegal kidnapping and incarceration and torture of private citizens in California. It is time for we, the people, to assert our rights to force those who break the law to answer to the law. And that is all I ask for, not revenge, not harming anyone, but honoring the laws under which you and I must live. And it is our duty to call for those same laws to be equally applied to the DA, to the prosecutors, to the governor, to the president. That is what makes America a free nation, is that laws apply to to all men. It, it, it was said right there, all men are created equal. And by that, it meant women too. And they are endowed by their creator with unalienable rights. That would include the right to grow your own food, the right to milk a cow, the right to be a milkman and sell an honest food product to your neighbor or at a farmer's market. To people who know what they're buying, people who buy raw milk, they know they're buying raw milk. It's not deceptively labeled. The, the real deception is in the pasteurized milk. That's deceptively labeled because they won't allow, the FDA won't allow milk without hormones to be labeled that it says made without hormones. That's because of Monsanto's lobbying of the federal government. You know, pasteurized milk is dead milk. The lactase enzymes have been destroyed. The homogenization is an artificial modification process that makes those milk fats more likely to promote heart disease and atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries. The real deception is the pasteurized milk. The only honest milk is raw milk. And yet that's what's being victimized here. That's what's being targeted. So you see, deception is winning in America today, and it's, we've got to turn the tables on that. We, the people, must take a stand against deception. We must take a stand against tyrants who are targeting our farms and our farmers and our food freedoms. And California's out of control. I mean, Governor Jerry Brown signed legislation that allows children 12 years old to consent to being vaccinated without parental permission. What? <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you kidding me? In Australia, they have a new law that's going to allow children that age to consent to sterilization. Our human rights are being taken away. Human dignity is under attack. The day is not far off, folks. If you don't stand up for this... The day is not far off when you'll be criminalized for owning seeds that are non-hybrid heirloom seeds. If you don't buy your seeds from a genetically modified seed company, you will be considered a terrorist. You think that's an exaggeration? Nobody would have thought five years ago that someone selling raw milk would be tortured as a dangerous criminal in the prison system. Nobody thought that. This tyranny creeps up on you. What you think is impossible today such as being a terrorist for owning seeds, will become fact tomorrow because the quest, the thirst for power, like a vampire's thirst for blood, the thirst for power over others knows no bounds. If the DA gets away with this, they will try something more absurd next. If the California legislature gets away with this, they will try something crazier next. If the national government gets away with painting people as terrorists because they own silver or they call themselves sovereign citizens, they, what will they try next? It could be anything. We already have legalized secret military prisons and secret arrests and secret torture. That's under the NDAA, signed into law by President Obama on New Year's Eve. It's already happening. And all you people out there living in denial... You're not helping the situation. In fact, you're allowing it to happen. If you remain silent, you acquiesce to the tyranny. You, you indirectly support it. If you want to have your freedom for your children, the freedom to farm, the freedom to garden, to grow food, to buy food, the freedom to say no to medication, then you better stand up for this right now. The hour of the demise of our freedoms grows near. 
I... I can only appeal to your sense of justice and humanity. I ask you to stand up and take action now. Join me at naturalnews.com and other alternative news sites like infowars.com which dare to tell the truth, which dare to question the tyranny and the oppression and the complete denial of our basic human rights. Support us. We're the last voices. And they're trying to censor us too. We're the last voices of freedom in America. The last voices calling for for food freedom, for farming freedom. If you, if you don't stand up now, you might as well just surrender and march yourself right into the jail, right into the gulag, give up, consider yourself a slave of the state, because that's what's coming. So share this file, my friends, or surrender to tyranny and total enslavement. There is no other choice now. You either fight this now, or, or you will die a slave. Read more at naturalnews.com. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, with unscripted comments following the interview with, with James Stewart of Rawsome Foods. And if they come for me next, I can only hope and pray that there's someone left to speak for me.